All right, Frank, uh, you are editor in chief at Frank Miller Presents, right? But I wanted to ask you, you've dealt with a lot of editors over the years. Like, what is your philosophy when it comes to being an editor? To, to, to uh, look at what is proposed and decide whether or not it's worth uh, doing mm -hmm. at yeah. all. If it is, is then to find the essential intent of what the of what the team is up to, and then to use whatever skills I've got and the knowledge and experience I have to help them follow their own intent as best as possible. And, and top that one. No, no, that was pretty good. I have to say it was pretty good. <laughs> no, and I, I, I'm going to have to build on what he said. Honestly, the, the, it's. It really is a lot of what Frank Miller presents is about craft. Mm -hmm. It's about skill. And we were just talking about about Neil Adams and how he was your mentor. Yeah. And it's that point now where there's so many people who want to work with Frank and want to learn. And not just we're talking about new talent, uh, pre-existing talent with long histories. They, 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 these. What's wonderful about artists is the evolution, and you see the evolution in Frank's art, mm -hmm. and you see the evolution in, in going forward, and you will see people still wanting to learn and grow. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I, I, but I, I also being quite serious, the other thing was interesting about this and you had this conversation with mm -hmm. me about, about how much you didn't want to be what you've railed against it for somebody who's railed against the industry as much mm -hmm. as you have and challenged the industry mm -hmm. to go out and become a publisher. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have the, you could fall into the trap of becoming what you have been fighting against. Yeah. And the goal for everything we hear is, is not to be that. Yeah. Um, is to be a better learning experience, a better creative experience, and an environment where everybody feels comfortable and where the priority is the finished product. And also with the, with the goal of um, not to simply feed the market what it's already established as wanting, but to challenge the market and to, and to, and to um, show the market the, the many things that comics can do that many readers may not be aware of yet. Yeah. There's, a, there's a rich history of what kinds of comics have been done, and there's all kinds of comics that haven't yet been done. And, and, and a lot of our mission is to take some chances and to, to um, dig deep into, in, into lost traditions. Yeah. It's, it's not about creating books that theoretically the market dictates, but really directing types of books that we believe the market needs and the types of stories the market would, would like to see that they might not be experiencing anywhere else. And uh, that's, that's, it's an interesting challenge because you sort of go into the unknown. You know, you have beliefs on what types of books people want or what you want, they think they want to see, but until you put it out there, you're, you're not really sure, right. you know? Mm -hmm. And that's, it's kind of fun and kind of scary at the same time because it's a new venture. So you, you want to make sure you, you're strong, but also you don't want to peak at the beginning. You want to really build and want to build momentum and build success behind the books and, and grow from there. So it's a very slow process. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, I, I think what's exciting for me is starting with a book like Ronin. And, you know, Frank won't, won't admit this, but he, he's doing layouts that we could have published. You, honestly, it might They're pretty it's something. comprehensive, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but the good part is that he's, he's giving these layouts to other artists and they're building on these stories and ideas and, and growing as artists working with them in that fashion. Mm -hmm. So it's not just turning in a beautiful book, but also you see this progression of talent going on that's just amazing to see. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's a good feeling when those pages come in. That's one of the things it's I missed. Wonderful. It's yeah. wonderful, because everybody is working so hard and there's so much enthusiasm that the and energy that comes from, from um, Phil and, and, and Danielle's uh, you know, the artwork that it's that it's it's uh, I mean it's it's a very energetic, charging book. And I'm, I'm in love with that. And and you said even you even it challenges you to take your own game up in its own way oh, too. Oh, absolutely. It's it's like uh, you know I mean at first I was rather cautious, well not knowing what the kids could handle, mm -hmm. um, and now that I see what they can handle, it's it's uh, I'm I'm going well. <laughs> Okay, you can handle that. See what you can do with this, you know, and and, and uh, um, uh, things like the you know the bio circuitry that runs through Ronan, the living circuitry. These guys have got a wonderful way, you know, their own way of portraying it, 
And so I've been using that much more of a, of a, as a, not, not just a motif, but as a living um, entity throughout, throughout everything. The, uh, the monster Agat, who's, who's, who's the central, you know, enemy in, in, in many ways. Yeah, that's beautiful. Is he, he takes on such stature yeah. and, and he's such a figure of horror that I, I've given him a richer and deeper, scarier voice and, and, and given him much more space across double page spreads than, than, than he had before. Okay. And again, building on the art, I've worked with Philip a number of times. Yeah. I've written for him. We've worked on several series together. Uh, honestly, I've watched his, and I, I love his artwork. That's one of the reasons why I, I brought yeah. everybody yeah. together. Yeah. But it, it, he's improved exponentially. It's, it's taken a leap on this art. A it's, good collaboration it's will do that. A yeah. good collaboration will do that. It's, 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 uh, because and 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 uh, you need the story and you need the trust between the collaborators and it's it's because I've had a lot of collaborations yeah. and the uh, um, I mean I'm hearkening back if you don't mind me reminiscing a little bit here is, is that is that to when Bill Sienkiewicz and I collaborated mm -hmm. first on a first on a graphic novel or their graphic novel and then on Electra Assassin. Um, we were we were throwing things back and forth, and we were both transformed. I learned basically. I had to learn a whole lot of of new ways of looking at comic book writing because the artwork was coming in, and some of it was, seemed like brilliant madness. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it, but it was but it it wasn't. It was everything was there, mm -hmm. and 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 so it was just a matter of recreating the way it was written so that so that it, it, the the art their writing would be deliberately as fragmented uh, it would be a jigsaw puzzle that the, that the that the reader would put together mm -hmm. i remember early on he said that he really wanted to do it um as as you know as color originals mm -hmm. and when we decided to let go with that all of a sudden all of his illustration influences and skills and the way that man can throw paint around it's just like it's like he even got into photo collage in it and it was, it was just so much was happening between the two of us that it was it was an electric experience yeah, not electra electric <laughs> <There you go. laughs>